We do not put someone on a plane if we are not 100% sure that they will be successful. Hi, Greg Holmes from the Philippines Recruitment Company, or TPRC. Today we're continuing our series of why 5% of Filipinos can fail in Australia in their first three months of employment. Now we're talking about a particular client story and this is why we started this series. A client rang me after their Filipino mechanic had only been in the country for a few weeks and they said to quote, this guy does not show the skills of a third year apprentice and we have some grave concerns and really don't think this is going to work out. So from there I triggered an investigation into our business to see what went wrong. We took the client on face value and we needed to determine what we had done wrong. So we went through their CV, we checked all the references, we went through our recruitment process and we determined that the candidate was as he said on the CV. I went back to the client after another week and they hadn't changed their view. They said he's not good enough but I said, can you give him a little bit more time? We are absolutely sure that this guy is up to the task. They did. And then another month later, I'd heard nothing. And I thought, do I ring? But I did. I got on the phone and I said to their HR manager, so how is our new guy coming along? And uh, she'd heard nothing back from the floor. So she then rang me back a couple of hours later and said, unbelievable turnaround. This guy's working out really well. We don't want him to go at all. Now that was uh, three or four years ago now. And I recently checked to see how he's going. And to quote again, the client, they said he is one of the best workers they have ever had in their workplace. Now what's you know really important to understand here is if their first thought after a few weeks was pretty solid, um, and if we had reacted straight away, that candidate would have left and we were going to have to find new alternative employment for that candidate. We would have done so and we would have given him a shot in another workplace. And I know how successful that would have been for the second employer. So what we want to do is make sure that we set up everything we can to ensure the success immediately upon arriving in Australia. So the three major areas to consider. Firstly, the yes sir syndrome. Now this is one that is so typical of people coming out of Asian countries and it can well be a yes sir, it's they're, where they're coming from in this instance is honor. They don't want to let anyone down by them not thinking that they know what they're talking about. They know the investment that a client has made and they don't want to let them down. And they're also saving face for their family who are not even here. But that's what they do. So they will be given instructions and they'll say, yes, sir. And they'll go about trying to make that work. Now that really is very dangerous in our workplace. As we know, we're talking about all sorts of things that can go wrong. So what's really important for our clients to understand is that it is not about giving instructions and asking if they understand. Because I can promise you 99 times out of 100, they will say, yes, sir. So what it's about doing is imparting the instruction and then asking the Filipino to repeat back what they understand from that instruction. Now, this may seem a little frustrating to start with. However, it sets up a pattern of behavior that ensures the success. If I go back to my story with our client, they don't have to do that anymore, but they did end up doing that in that period of not understanding. They spent more time explaining and hearing back from the candidate whether or not they understood it. And that then ensured the success. He's become one of their best workers. So number two, uh, really importantly, the way we are as Australians in the workplace. And we're talking about a lot of blue collar areas here. And sometimes our bravado, our language, which is quite commonplace inside a workplace, is not what Filipinos are used to. 
And what that does, it, it, they then retract back into their shell and they get really concerned about anything that's going on. If people are raising their voices, if people are swearing, they can quite often think that it may be directed at them where it's not at all. And they may not enjoy that environment until they get used to it. So it's a matter of being aware of that so the entire workplace can be really cognizant of what's actually going on in the workplace with respect to the Filipino. Now this is just an initial period, so this doesn't mean the workplace needs to change forever, but it's being respectful of their new talent who's just arrived and finding their feet. They get used to it and it is absolutely no issue, but it's a matter of being really respectful of that in the beginning. The third thing, which is something that we always talk about right up front, and that is speed and productivity. In Asia, quite typically where Filipinos have come from, whether they're working in the Middle East or in the Philippines, when they get busy, they tend to throw more people at the problem rather than efficiency. And that's because we're talking about very low wages. In Australia, there is a, a bay, a service bay, that needs to produce so much per hour. The candidate costs so much per hour, the bay costs so much per hour, and there needs to be productivity that comes from that bay. This is foreign to our Filipinos. Given them a task, they know it needs to be, we know it needs to be finished in a certain period of time, otherwise it doesn't work. So there needs to be, again, a settling in and understanding of that. They quite often have never been asked to finish something in a hurry. We now need for them to have productivity, efficiency built into their understanding of what's required. Again, this just takes time and we have a 99% success rate of all candidates. So it's only a matter of time before that becomes effective for them. So that wraps up this quick series. What I'd like to do again is to say, click on the link below if you'd like to see more of this. Um, and you can then also share that with anyone else that you feel may find value in this. Again, Greg Holmson, The Philippines Recruitment Company, thanks very much.